Numerical Computation, Chapter 5, Video 9. In this video, we'll look at secant method. Recall Newton's method. We see that in Newton's method, in the iteration, one needs to compute f at xk as well as f prime at xk. So two function evaluations. And one can argue that sometimes f prime of x might not be available or might be very difficult to compute. So we would prefer maybe to avoid that computation. And this leads to the next method. So a way to avoid computing f prime is to use some kind of approximation. So um, if we already have computed xk and xk plus 1, we can simply take the slope of the secant line connecting the two points at xk and xk plus 1 and use that as an approximation to the derivative of f at xk. So in a way, we are approximating the function f by the secant line through xk and xk minus 1. And then we'll solve this linear function, and that root will be the next approximation, x at k plus 1. And that's why this method is called secant method. Okay, so plug in this f approximation for f prime. The secant method now reads the following. So it's basically Newton, but the f prime is approximated by this expression. We see that um, in order to initiate the iteration, we now need two initial guesses, x0 and x1. But that should not be a problem, because if you have a good initial guess, x0, you can just choose a nearby point, x1, and initiate the iteration here. So some advantages include no computation of f prime, and actually there is only one f computation at each step. So it looks like in the iteration you need to have f of xk and f of xk minus 1. But you know f of xk minus 1 was computed in the previous step. So you can just managing it and store it somewhere and take it out of memory instead of computing it. So remember, in the algorithm, the function evaluation is the most expensive step. So actually, sequence method is faster than Newton's met method in the sense that it actually takes less function evaluation. Okay. And also it has rather rapid convergence, which we'll take a closer look now. Okay, so a little bit on convergence. One can show the following. The arrow at step k plus 1 equals to some constant times the previous arrow to the power alpha where alpha exactly equals to this number, which is approximately 1.6. So it's strictly bigger than 1, but strictly less than 2. So this convergence is faster than linear convergence, but a bit slower than the quadratic convergence. Therefore, it is called superlinear convergence. The convergence result is the same as um, that for Newton. That is, if the initial guess x0, x1 are sufficiently close to the root r, then this method always converges. And we will observe this rapid convergence through the next example. So let's look at the same example as we did um, with Newton's method. Let's say we want to compute square root of a and we try to solve the polynomial x squared minus a equal to 0 by secant method. So if you set it up, then this becomes the secant iteration. So and it's similar to Newton, but right here the f prime is replaced by the approximation xk minus xk minus 1 over this guy is f at xk, this is f at xk minus 1. Okay, um, some simplification, you can manipulate a bit and write it in the simpler form, or you don't have to do that. We're going to test this with a equal to 3. So we choose initial data, similar to Newton's method. Let's say x0 is 1.65, 
and x1 is 1.7. So they are good initial guesses. Okay, so x1 is 1.7, that's its arrow. And we perform one secant iteration, we get the next one, 1 1.7328, and the arrow is in, in the magnitude 10 to the negative 4. And one more iteration, I get x3, 1.7320, and the arrow is 10 to the negative 6. And one more iteration, I get 1.7321, my arrow is 10 to the negative 9. And one more iteration, and then we see my arrow now um, reduced down to 10 to the negative 15. We see that um, the convergence actually is a little bit slower than Newton's method, but really not much. If you count the total number of iterations needed here, it's only one more than that we did for Newton. I would also like to catch your attention to this superlinear convergence. You see, arrow negative 2 reduced to negative 4. That's almost like quadratic. It's squared. But we know the alpha is approximately 1.6, is about 1.5, which we observe here. So from step 2 to step 3, this iteration, the arrow is reduced by, if you multiply 4 by 1.5, you get about 6. So that's a superlinear convergence here. And then also... From this step to that step, you get negative 6, right? And multiply this by 1.5, you get about 9. And then you multiply 9 by about 1.5, you get about 15. So it's a very typical superlinear convergence um, demonstrated here. Okay, so conclusion, secant method, totally awesome. Now, it is still annoying though, Newton's and secant's method needs a good initial guess and if you don't have it there's no guarantee it will converge so in practical um, computation people will use hybrid methods which we describe now so you would sample your function f through some sampling process to find a value a and b such that f has opposite sign on a and b then you know for sure on the interval between a and b there will be a root then you use the most robust method the bisections method and you perform some iterations maybe five six depending on how large the interval is to get some good initial guess x zero initial guess for who well initial guess for either newton or secant whichever you choose to use with this initial guess, which hopefully is good, the method should converge for about three, four iterations. Okay, so that is a hybrid method combining the strength of different methods, and it's the most robust and commonly used one. So that's all for um, this chapter, and see you next time.